Hey there, welcome to Module 14. In this course, we will cover troubleshooting, documents, and architect. In this module, we will review architect, including flow outcomes and milestones. We will also review the audit viewer and log capture in the troubleshooting section. Lastly, we will cover the document section. If you are keeping track, this module will cover the architect, troubleshooting, and the document sections. Let's get started. Data tables allow you to store data locally and ensure that architect can access it within an interaction. You can use data tables to access data sets larger than allowed by a switched statement. Let's create a data table. Click data tables under architect. Click the plus button. In the name box, type a meaningful, unique name for the data table. In the division field, choose the division you want this to be in or leave it in the default division. In the notes box, enter any helpful information about the table. In the reference key label box, add a descriptive name to describe the purpose or intent of the table's primary key. Click Add Field and select one of the following. To configure a Boolean or checkbox field, do the following. In the field label box, type a meaningful name for the field. To ensure the field appears checked by default, select True by default. To configure a string, do the following. In the field label box, type a meaningful name for the field. Type a default text value. To configure an integer field, do the following. In the field label box, type a meaningful name for the field. Enter a default value. To configure a number, do the following. In the field label box, type a meaningful name for the field. Enter a default value. In this example, we will be using a Boolean and string field, as noted in the screenshot. Click Save. It will take you back to the data tables view. Click on the data table you just created and click the plus button. In the reference key, we are using the schedule group names. Input the schedule group name you want to reference. That will be our input. For the Boolean enabled, check the box. This will be checked in the call flow, and if enabled, we'll play the prompt that we input in the prompt field. In the prompt field, put the name of the prompt you want to play. Make sure the prompt and schedule group names are exact. Click Save. Now, set this aside as we will circle back to this. Next, let's start with the call data action. Architect helps administrators and flow authors build call flows that answer a call automatically, present the caller with menu choices, and then route the call according to the caller's choice. The options presented to your customers might change based on changes to your business. Whether it is a new order, a question, or an issue, routing through Architect allows callers to determine their needs by choosing among options. In our Architect course, we cover this side. Through the first 13 modules, we covered the Genesis Cloud Admin section. In Module 6, we covered Prompt Management in Architect. In Module 7, we covered Schedule Management in Architect. In this module, we will take a look on how your tasks as an administrator coincide with what an architect does in the call flows. This is meant to give you an understanding of what you do and how it can affect the call flow builds. To get a more in-depth look at Architect, please refer to our Architect course. To get started, open up Architect, find the test flow you want to use, and open it. Click Edit. If this looks familiar, it is because this was the call flow we used in earlier modules. The three toolbox items we are going to review are Call Data Action, Data Table Lookup, and Get External Contact. Call Data Action is in the Data category of the Task Editor's Toolbox. When the flow runs, the Data Action sends input to a web service and retrieves data back from the web service. We are going to use the Get on Q Agents Counts Data action. Use the Data Table Lookup action to retrieve data stored in a Genesis Cloud Data Table. Use the Data Table we just created previously. Finally, use the Get External Contact action to retrieve information about an existing external contact. We will use the external contact we created in a previous module. After driving the Call Data action to the call flow, you are able to set some configuration items. Type a distinctive name for the call data action. The label you enter here becomes the action's name displayed in the task sequence. Select an audio prompt that plays during longer call data actions. The audio lets callers know that the interaction is experiencing extended processing times. This option confirms for the user that the interaction did not disconnect, but is still in progress. Select the appropriate category that contains the data action. Click the arrow at the end of this list and select the appropriate data action. To narrow the selection, type the first few letters of the appropriate action. 
This timeout determines how long the flow action waits for the integration service to return a response. Select this checkbox for the default one-minute timeout for the data action. Remove the checkmark and define your own timeout parameters. Define the input values the action carries out at runtime. In this case, you can find the queue ID by going to the queue in the admin panel and copying the 32 alphanumeric IDs and pasting it in the queue ID field. Select an existing variable or enter a new variable to assign the data values returned by the integration data action. The architect will then use any information returned to customize the caller's interaction or provide pertinent information to the agent or to provide more data for self-service. Next, let's use the data table we just created. Use the data table lookup action to retrieve data stored in a Genesis cloud data table. Use the data table we just created previously. After adding the data table lookup from the toolbox, the developer will then type a distinctive name for the action. The label you enter here becomes the action's name displayed in the task sequence. Select the data table. Click the arrow at the end of this list and select the desired data table. Enter the reference key value you want to find. This would be the schedule group name. The found outputs will be the other columns in the data table. These outputs allow the flow author to map the custom field values in the data table to variables within the flow. These outputs allow the flow author to map the results of any resulting error type and error message. The developer will then set the found, not found and failure paths based on information being returned. For the get external contact, after adding the get external contact task from the toolbox, the developer will then type a name for the action. The label you enter here becomes the action's name displayed in the task sequence. Enter a literal value or expression in the external contact ID field. Architect creates a variable for use with the external contact result field. In this case, you can find the external contact ID by going to the external contact in the admin panel and copying the 32 alphanumeric IDs and pasting it in the external contact ID field. Type a name for the variable to store the external contact found in this action. You can reference this variable in the rest of the flow. Now, let's turn our focus to flow milestones and flow outcomes. Administrators and contact center managers use flow milestones and outcomes to gather data about self-service success. Milestones are points in a flow that track the completion of significant events or tasks in a process, such as first response or case resolution times. This feature enables you to provide your customers with a consistent support experience and helps determine how well architect flows service the customer interaction. For example, if a customer tries to make a payment three times and only succeeds on the third attempt, then Flow Outcomes reporting sees this as an overall successful outcome and reports it as such, whereas Milestones reporting tells you that that multiple payment attempts occurred, assuming that you add milestones to the payment process. Let's create a Flow Milestone. Click Flow Milestones under Architect and click the plus button. Type a descriptive name for the milestone. For example, Check Balance. Choose which division to put the milestone in. Home is default. Add a more detailed description of the milestone. Click Save. Let's move on and create a flow outcome. Administrators and contact center managers use flow outcomes to gather data about self-service success. Click Flow Outcomes under Architect, then click the plus button. Type a descriptive name for the outcome. For example, check balance. Choose which division to put the outcome in. Home is default. Add a more detailed description of the milestone. Click Save. Now, let's see how what you just created is implemented in Architect. Use the initialized flow outcome action to choose a flow outcome that Architect begins to track in the flow. This action is available in the flow category of the task editor's toolbox for call, chat, email, and messaging flows, excluding in-queue call flows. When an interaction encounters this action, Architect creates a date and time starting point for the outcome. In the name field, type a distinctive name for the action, or leave the default text, initialize flow outcome. The label you enter here becomes the action's name displayed in the call, chat, email, and messaging flow structure. In the flow outcome field, Click the list and choose the outcome. Architect begins to track in the flow. Use the Add Flow Milestone action in Architect Flows to generate more granular reporting for flow outcomes. Access to flow milestones helps build reporting around the customer journey. In the name field, type a distinctive name for the action or leave the default text, Add Flow Milestone. 
The label you enter here becomes the action's name displayed in the call, chat, email, and messaging flow structure. In the Flow Outcome field, click the list and choose the Flow Outcome for this task action. In the Flow Milestone field, click the list and select the Flow Milestone for this task action. Use this action to define a potential outcome that the system tracks as success or failure when an interaction reaches a certain point in the flow. This action is available in the Flow category of the Task Editor's toolbox for call, chat, email, and messaging flows, excluding in-queue call flows. In the Name field, type a distinctive name for the action, or leave the default text, Set Flow Outcome. The label you enter here becomes the action's name displayed in the call, chat, email, and messaging flow structure. In the Flow Outcome field, click the list and choose the Flow Outcome for this task action. When an interaction encounters this outcome, the system updates the end date and time. Use this action multiple times for the same flow outcome. In the Value field, set this value for the outcome. Architect knows the allowable set of flow outcome values and displays localized strings for the outcome values. In the example, notice that if the data action returns success, we set it as a success, but if it is a failure, we set the outcome as a failure. Next, let's take a look at the Audit Viewer. The Audit Log Viewer does not display data by default. You must select a service for data to appear. You can filter further by selecting an entity type and or an action. The other filter options are reserved for future use. In the example shown here, we added Architect as the service. Notice that the flow outcomes and flow milestones pop up since we just made those changes today. As you can see, this viewer is a very useful tool if you are attempting to narrow down who made a change and what the change was. Let's dig a little deeper and look at the log captures. Troubleshooting issues with incomplete information can be difficult. Console logs provide customer care with a full picture of an issue. When problems occur, these logs provide visibility into the actions and events of an agent on Genesis Cloud. Apart from manually gathering console logs, you can enable automatic log capturing for specific users in Genesis Cloud for 24 hours. When enabled, you can inspect or download the available console logs. Let's enable our test user. Under Troubleshooting, click Log Capture. In the Search for a User box, type one or more characters to begin the search. The characters are not case sensitive. As you type, only usernames that match your criteria appear in the list. On the hover text that displays the user's name, click Enable. The console logs for the user appear on the log capture page for 10 days until automatic deletion. The log capturing is active for 24 hours and indicated by a green check mark in the Is Logging Active column. The check mark does not indicate that logs for the user are gathered yet. Clicking on the eyeball opens the user's logs page for troubleshooting. You can filter logs by time, text, or type. Click the date range hyperlink to open the calendar view, enter the required date and time range, and click the right arrow icon to filter by time. In Filter Entries box, type one or more characters to begin the search. The characters are not case sensitive. As you type the log entries that contain that text are displayed. To exclude the view of an entry type in the logs, clear the debug, info, log, warn, or error checkbox as needed. To download logs to your system, perform one of the following steps. On the log capture page, click Download Logs for User. On the log capture page, click Inspect Logs for User to open the user's logs page, filter the entries as required, and on the lower right corner, click Download. Let's touch on the final item, Documents. In Documents, the Document Dashboard is the first page you see. You use the Document Dashboard to View the workspaces that organize your files. Open your personal workspace. Search for files across all your workspaces. See the list of files that you have recently uploaded or edited. Essentially, Documents is your own personal dashboard where you can store company documents and be a part of group workspaces, which enables you to be completely collaborative amongst your team. To recap, this module is designed to provide you with more extensive knowledge around how your decisions affect the call flows and data integration in your architect and the data tables. We walked through and discussed how flow milestones and outcomes assist with reporting. There are several tools that can be utilized for troubleshooting, which can assist any administrator in getting the issue resolved quickly and efficiently. Although the document section is a small section, it is important when it comes to collaboration with your teams and groups. Thank you for completing Module 14. 
In Module 15, we will do a quick review of the course. See you there.